Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending today's Moving Your Business Online webinar. My name is Rebecca Ganikoch, Business Engagement Officer for the City of Whittlesey, and I'll be your host for this morning. On behalf of the City of Whittlesey, I recognise the rich Aboriginal heritage of this country and acknowledge the Wurundjeri Willem clan as the traditional owners of this place. I'd like to now invite City of Whittlesey Administrator Peter Duncan to say a few words. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Rebecca. Um, I've obviously just been appointed administrator from June the 19th this year, and I'm very excited about that. My background is commercial marketing, business development, um, and HR, so it's a bit of a mixed bag, but very, very attuned to small business, medium and large business enterprises, and particularly online. I'm also the chairman of Greyhound Racing Victoria, so we have a very big digital platform, so I'm right across this space as well. And I'm very much looking forward to working with everyone in the community, the small businesses, medium to large, to get everyone back up on track once we've come through this COVID process. And obviously people are adapting their businesses at the moment in terms of, well, you look at restaurants and things, they've had to go from a dine-in situation to pick up and delivery through Uber Eats, menu log, whatever the delivery thing, or delivering straight from their own premises. So it's about being adaptable and agile, particularly in a time of crisis. But then what are we going to do to help you come through that crisis and get you re-established? So we will be working really hard with the community on that. We've obviously got grants, programs and recovery um, money available. So anything we can do as the council to help our community and the small businesses in our community, we are absolutely there to support you every step of the way to have our um, whole municipality back and thriving as soon as it's possible from the Victorian government when they ease our restrictions. So I'm delighted to be here today. And as I said, we are here to help and make sure that everybody has the most successful future they can in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator Duncan. To the attendees, we may have met during previous face-to-face -face economic development business support events over the years, which I very much look forward to hosting again in the future. Nevertheless, despite the current situation, the City of Whittlesea is proud to offer a series of webinars to support your growth during this period. You will note that you can submit any questions you have via the Q&A function to the right of your screen. Your questions will be assessed and posted to the Q&A listing for our presenter to answer during the last 15 minutes of the session. I have taken note of the questions that you've submitted during your registration, so those will be posted after the main presentation. Please understand that any questions not answered will be followed up after the event through the most appropriate channels. Also, a reminder that this webinar will be recorded and will be made available on Council's YouTube channel within a few days. So today's presenter is Samantha Tupper, owner of TDIS Clothing. An exemplar of agility and innovation, Samantha leveraged the challenges that bricks and mortar retail presented to her business during COVID-19 and moved her business online while setting up her distribution centre further north in the Whittlesea area. She has gathered a massive amount of real life experience, which she will share with us today. So without further ado, let's begin our presentation. Good morning, Sam. Thanks for presenting for us today. Good morning. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Um, this is my first ever webinar, so um, bear with me, but I'm really excited <laughs> about it. <laughs> no worries. So let's start the presentation. Can you run us through today's agenda and what you'll be sharing with us today? Um, so um, our agenda is today our vision strategy, goal setting, personal branding, social media, creating a community and why e-commerce. Um, and um, moving your business online, building a website, directing traffic, and um, my top three lessons. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so tell us about your journey as a business owner. How did you get to where you are today? Um, so it all started about seven years ago. Um, I actually got made redundant twice in six months and I always had a dream of being a business owner. Um, I grew up with a family that had, my parents had their own business 
for as long as I could remember. So I knew that was a path that I wanted to take. We had actually just taken um, a loan out to build our dream house or put a deposit down on our dream house and I got made redundant the week after. And I remember crying on my daughter's bed. I'm not too sure why it was there, but I remember it very clearly saying, I don't want to work for anyone anymore. I want to work for myself. Um, I want to be able to take my kids to school and do their after school activities and be a bit more flexible with my lifestyle. So we made that sliding door decision to open up a bricks and mortar store. I've always loved clothing so I knew that fashion was definitely um, the way to go for me and I loved dressing any shape and size so that's how I began the journey of that shop in Doreen and we started with the bricks and mortar store so I didn't um, I didn't even think for one minute that I would be an online store at all but yeah it definitely moves um, your journey moves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an amazing journey. Uh, you've been so busy and you've done it with uh, so much style. Um, so just moving on. Um, so we've all heard the saying, uh, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. What can you tell us about setting out a business strategy? Um, so I do actually have a few notes on the business strategy. Um, so you do have to have a dream and you have to have a vision. Um, so if you write down all the notes of what you want to do, where you want to be and um, have it clear on paper, that helps so much. Um, so when I opened up that shop in Doreen, so we're known as TSID Clothing now, but when I opened up that shop in Doreen, I had no idea about online. And a year after I had opened, I fell pregnant with um, my fourth daughter, well, fourth child, and I had to go on maternity leave. So I was um, in that sort of cross path as well, whereas the bricks and mortar store couldn't afford to pay my wage as well as a full-time employee's wage at the same time. So I really didn't want to miss out on um, the opportunity that I was given to stay home with my daughter and put her in full-time care. So that's when my online journey actually began. So it was it, it's very similar to what's happened with COVID. You had to make that hard decision on like, do I go down this path or do I go down another path? So that's how my journey began with online. Um, with, um, with your vision, um, questions to ask yourself um, would be, what can I do now? Um, how can I um, create a movement? Um, what can I do that is new? What can I do that's relevant? And what are people asking for? So um, I, I, I actually, revisit these um, strategies um, um, quite regularly because mm. everything's always changing. So it's not something that you just do once and hope it works for the best. Um, mm. My favourite saying is, what got, what got us here won't get us there. So it's definitely mm. re-evaluating, re oh, can't say that word probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so you definitely got to reevaluate. Re oh God! Oh, oh, <laughs> um, yeah, so just keep visiting um, your strategies, and change is always good too. Mm. So um, moving on to the next slide. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. So, um, so we've done so. So, yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, strategy helps us out with long-term trajectory. But how about getting through the day to day? How do we keep our eyes on the prize? Oh, so day to day. Um, I think it's really, it's really hard 
when you don't have um, people that um, you don't have staff members because I used to be a one man band <laughs> and mm. I've been so lucky to be able to employ women over um, over the last seven years of my um, business. Um, but at the start, I did everything myself. So I basically just wrote down a, um, like just wrote down everything that I needed to do in the day and just got through my to-do list. Um, that's a very simple way of um, just getting through day to day. But as everyone that would know that owns a business, it's not just um, it's not just a nine to five job. It could be a twenty four hour job. So mm, <laughs> it's absolutely. definitely um, yeah. How do you maintain motivated through all of that? Oh, I just have such a passion. Um, a passion. I think it sort of more comes of like wanting to grow. Um, it has never been about what our turnover is or anything like that. I've just always wanted to give and grow and um, just had that real drive to keep bettering myself. Um, and that's, yeah, it's definitely, I suppose it's, it's entrepreneur, um, yeah, I think you've either got it that fire in your belly or you don't. <laughs> mm. But so you have you you have here um measuring your progress through your goals. At what point do you realize that you've sort of ticked that goal and move on? How do you measure your progress? Well, um, my major goal two years ago was to get into a warehouse, and everyone that has known my journey has known that I started from my my online store from my garage and my front lounge room. And if I could show you, I think I've actually got it. Would my phone um, show up a picture? <laughs> we can try. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, hang on. Two seconds. I actually found it the other day and I went, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether you could see. Can you see that? Yeah. The ring light's a little bit in the way, but we can get the gist of it. So that was my front lounge room. Oh, oh the my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, um, so my, yeah, my, driving was to get that stuff out my house and into a warehouse and we were able to wow. do it um just oh it's nearly it will be two years in um december so we've been in this warehouse for nearly two years coming mm. years um but yeah recently um we closed down so I, I absolutely loved my um, little store in Doreen. Um, mm. It was where I started. I had I was so attached to it. Um, it was where I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter, and it was just um, yeah, so much attachment to it. And our lease was up, and I said I said to my husband, I'm like. I just can't see this pandemic easing anytime soon. And here we are like seven months, seven, eight months later and nine months later and um, it definitely hasn't eased. So in um, March this year, we made the heartbreaking decision to close our bricks and mortar store. Doesn't mm. mean I'll never have another store um, in my life. I'll probably move to pop-up stores. Um, just to get our brand out there. But right. yeah, that was definitely where like I had to go, all right, we're not gonna have a physical store anymore and I've got to put all my efforts into online. Um, and that's what we're doing at the moment. And it's mm. definitely paid off when your efforts yeah, are definitely. Yeah. 
So when your efforts are channeled into one um, sole area, you can um, you can definitely see the reward um, like when you put it in. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on to the next slide. Um, so how, how can we go about um, making our businesses really stand out, especially now that there are so many other businesses vying for attention uh, for new clients? Yeah, so that's, um, it, it's definitely got to be trust and um, by putting your, everyone's got a story to tell. So by putting your story out there and telling your story, whether you have a personal, I have a personal page, Sammy Tupper on Instagram, um, and then I do share my journey on um, TSID a little bit as well. So people actually know me personally and uh, that trust is so important. Um, so customers will keep coming back to you if, you, if they trust you. And it's not always about selling. Um, I find like if I share a story about myself, that's just building that trust factor. Um, two, two years ago, I had weight loss surgery and I decided to stay accountable for myself. I would share my whole journey. So that up there now, that slide um, is my before mm -hmm. photo and after photo. Um, so I shared that whole journey on Instagram and it was mainly for me to see the progress and stay accountable for myself. But in um, what I received is this whole community of people um, like asking questions about how I went about it um, and then a lot of trust was built through that community which has reflected in TSID as well. So that's, um, yeah, personal branding is definitely important and telling your story and that's how you can definitely stay, like stand out from the crowd. Right. Um, so the next, that's an amazing story. I think I feel a lot of us are a little bit tentative about sharing personal details, but I suppose when you're building a, when you've got your, your product being about uh, building trust and helping women Sort of coming to their own. I suppose having a personal story and sharing that is really important. Um, so okay. uh, on to the next slide. Um, as part of Council's business support, I know personally um, I received quite a few calls from business owners wanting to break into the social media space. Um, what yep. advice can you give them? Um, so social media is definitely the place to be. Um, social media is amazing for business. And the good news is um, now is the best time to be online because everyone's home. They're checking their phones more often. Um, so you will be seen. Um, it's up 30% compared to prior to COVID. So it is definitely the place to be. I personally love Instagram. I feel like Instagram is um, is perfect to share um, your stories. It's got so many features. It's got um, stories. It's got reels. You can do a post. You can do IGTVs that are up to an hour long. So you could be like, for example, for me, I'd be styling um, styling a customer on an IGTV. I'm yet to do that. Right in the plans. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I have uh, all these ideas for um, Instagram and um, that's my passion. I really love Instagram. Um, but Facebook's still just as important. Um, Facebook is great for paid advertising if you have that in your budget where um, like unfortunately now in this day and age you do have to pay to play on Facebook, um, you don't always get seen organically, but it's great. Um, we've had, we've invested a bit of, um, we've only just started doing paid Facebook ads um, in the last 
month or two and we have seen a huge reward with that which has been amazing it's definitely good mm. yeah the return on investment is huge yeah okay so as far as people getting into social media how do they actually engage a professional to either teach them or manage their accounts tell me about that so um i actually use a company called um creative seed um her name's beck she's amazing so um she will like schedule this has only really happened in the last um probably a year and a half, two years, when I felt like I needed to outsource um, a bit of help with my social media. So Beck will schedule in all my posts. I just send her the photos. Um, she'll reply to a lot of my DMs. Um, so all that's getting done behind the scenes. But she's also great for startups as well. So that, mm. Yeah, that's my recommendation. Yeah, I feel that um, a lot of businesses, they they understand Facebook and social media on a personal level, but they don't understand the huge benefits that it has once it goes onto a more commercial business platform. Um, so what I'm just trying to understand is, is it really worth it for a business to invest in their social media platform on, on their business side? Oh, 100%. It's so important. Um, so when I first started, I did have a Facebook page. I didn't have Instagram. Um, so this was like going on six or so years ago and um, I never used it. And it's only been in the last um, three years, um, three to four years that I actually started um, seeing like using social media and we've had a huge growth in social media like with our with our um audience and to have an audience i feel like you actually need to have an audience to be able to um have a website because it's like it's a community mm. and um if you open up a website and just hope that people stumble across it on google it's just it, it would be near to poss impossible because um, you like you're fighting against so many other people out there. But if you are sharing on social media and you have your followers, they're going to um, they're going it's going to show up on their feed um, and yeah, and hopefully in return it will lead to a sale. Perfect. That actually leads really well onto our next slide. So. One thing uh, that many of us miss during the lockdown is having a sense of that human connection. Uh, yeah. When we're even when we're out shopping or engaging with other services, um, that's disappeared recently. So, how important is it to keep that sense of connection even on the online realm? So, um, on Facebook, we have got a group in its TSID clothing. Um, and it's like our little community. Everyone um, that's on there will share their outfit of the day. They might they might be wearing their TSID outfit or they um, will mix and match with other brands. And um, it's a really safe environment and everyone comments on people that have posted a photo of their outfit. And I feel like that has kept um, like our community feel alive and mm. it's almost like a hub where people go and talk. They'll talk um, about like how jeans fit or their mum tums or anything. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun and it's a really, really safe environment for people to hop on and share their thoughts and yeah, mm. we love it. We cherish our um, Facebook community. Um, amazing yeah so yeah definitely a group um and a group actually so with facebook pages like i was talking before that you have to um pay to sort of play on facebook whereas a facebook group creating that group that um will come up on um 
people's feed. So every time someone posts in that group, the 8,000 people that are part of that group, um, that photo will show up on their feed. So it's, it's a very organic way of advertising without me getting on there selling. So it's definitely a um, way to go. It's very clever. Um, so, hold on. Um, oh, I don't know what happened there. Hold on. <laughs> How did I do that? Oh, I'll just um, move this. Sorry. See you on my Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what I'm okay, I can share. I can share your presentation. OK, um, so <laughs> we'll um, on to the, the big, big question. Um, why e-commerce? Can you explain to us uh, what is e-commerce and how can our businesses benefit from it? OK, so e-commerce is a online store. Um, it's it's um, available word, worldwide. Um, it opens up a global, um, it opens you up to being global. It's just amazing. So there's our little little store in Doreen. So we used to have to wait for people for foot traffic, whereas our online stores open 24 hours a day. Um, if you're up in the middle of the night breastfeeding your child, you can be scrolling through TSID clothing and yeah, purchase if you feel like it. So mm. it's basically um, money while you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so have you found that you're catching a different type of market? Um, oh, not really. We still... Mm. Our um, audience is predominantly 34 to 44. We've got that sort of 10, 10 year um, audience. Um, we've got like that's our major audience, whereas a little bit 24 to 34 and then and then there's a little bit for 44 to 54 and that's but our major audience is that mum mum um, Mum audience. Um, mm. I think it's the affordable fashion as well. So that's right. You're and how about the cost savings? Um, oh, it's huge. So now we only pay the one rent, whereas we actually were paying three rents prior to um, shutting our stores down. We had a store in Phil Island as well. So mm. yeah, we made that heartbreaking decision to shut Phillip Island down and Doreen and now we just only have the one overhead which um, when this whole pandemic um, started I was actually over in um, in San Diego um, at a conference called um, the world of social media so I was really lucky to spend a week learning all about social media, about online trends and things like that just before this all broke out. So I felt like I had a really good knowledge and I was ready to, like I was, it was all prepped for me. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Grateful. I was very. Um, so um, just talking about um, transitioning what what does it actually can you take us through the, um, the steps how to get through to transitioning online okay so I'd probably say the most important um, thing is to concentrate on a social media platform and build your audience um, I probably wouldn't suggest to like choose like everything out there, maybe just do one thing and do it really well and then maybe add as you go. Um, as I said before, I love Instagram. Um, 
So I find Instagram an amazing platform. Um, people use it as a search engine as well. They'll search hashtags. Um, you can do a lot of collaborating on there with influencing marketing as well. So that's been really, um, yeah, I'd, I would suggest hands down Instagram, put all your effort into that. And um, so if you're a bricks and mortar store and you haven't, um, you haven't even touched on website or anything like that, you'll need to register your name on um, domain. So you'll have a um, web address. Um, and I'll, yeah, I would suggest, I would highly suggest um, using, I found Shopify the easiest program to use as well. So that's um, a like back engine for your website store. So that will um, keep all your stock um, inventory and um, it will pay, like pay you as people, um, purchase and things like that. What else have I got here? Um, um, yeah, so, um, oh, photos. <laughs> You'll need photos. So I actually, we, up until COVID, we had a photographer that was coming every week um, to take photos of our clothes. We've never actually used a model, so it's always been, um, like local mums, real mum, like real people that have modelled our clothing. Mm -hmm. and, um, so we're using a photographer and then um, like COVID happens and that all had to shut down. So we had to quickly think outside the square and we invested in the camera, um, but iPhones are amazing now. So you can um, take photos easily on your iPhones by doing it yourself. Um, um, where else am I up to? <laughs> um, yeah, so well, you've, you've done um, chosen a sales channel. You've talked about Instagram. You've talked about adding the domain. Um, you said um, prepare standard pages. So homepage about section. Can you tell us about just what the content and layout of a web page would look like? Okay, so um, your landing page will be um, maybe like a beautiful picture of um, like what you have for sale, like one of, one of your favourites, and then it will have maybe a new arrivals section and your best selling items. So I'll ha I have um, like dresses, um, tops, and then pants on that section. So that's your landing page, um, but then. It, when you you can go like so that's your home page and then you can sort of go into other pages along from there and the about me page um, is really important as well um, um, so it's just a little bit about your business um, what you, like your story and how you started and um, like what what your um, values are as a business right. and yeah so that's um that's basically, that's basically so with the um payment gateway which is probably one of the more important parts of e-commerce um what can you do about making sure that that's all um okay so um like as i said before shopify um like can run a lot of that but I find a lot of people like to use secure payments like PayPal. So um, being able to add PayPal to your website is really important. Um, and now we have the options of um, pay later. So Afterpay and ZipPay is used very regularly on our website. Um, it's kind of like a lay-by system, um, but you get your goods like before you've paid for it. So that's right. really important to set up on your website. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you've got here as well, uh, make it easy for shoppers to contact you. That seems um, like a bit of a no-brainer, but I can imagine how devastating it would be if one of those contact details was um, was not right. 
So I've hopped onto websites before and um, I actually haven't purchased from them because I don't know where they are. Um, I don't know their address. They've got no information on there whatsoever. They don't have a phone number. Um, so we have all that information um, available to our customers. Um, we've got a phone number. We've got um, so our customers can ring us at any time um, if they need to be walked through purchasing online. We try to make it really simple for them. Um, so we've got a great customer service team that helps there. But definitely put all your contact details up there because it makes you a trustworthy site. Mm. Um, yeah. That sounds like really good advice. And how about analytics? Um, so analytics is like something, so you've sort of got to like discover the keywords. So ours is maybe affordable fashion, um, finding words that people will search and um, short words. So it's just sort of like getting into your customer's brain and um, thinking about things that they might be searching on a daily basis. Um, yeah. So can you see how many people have visited your website? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, what can you what can you gain from from those insights? Is have you used those numbers to kind of change the way that you run your business or tweak things here and there? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, definitely. Um, the more we put out there on social media, the more views that our website gets seen. So if we lately, what has been working really well for us is um, like doing funny TikTok videos or, um, or real videos where it seems to be um, like beating the algorithms on um, on like social media platforms where people are engaging in it and when they engage in something they will head over to our website to see what we have to offer so yeah. it's definitely tweaking your content on social media will reap your awards on um on your website so. <laughs> fantastic yeah. So we've already talked a little bit about um, oh, um, building a website. So we'll just quickly um, just do a bit of a summary. You've already spoken about directing traffic to the the web page. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on as far as directing traffic? Um, well, I reckon probably that influencer marketing. Um, is definitely, I'll give you some examples. So last year we um, did a collaboration on Instagram with a um, blogger called The Real Mama. And what we did was we designed a, um, a little, very um, small clothing edit um, and we called it um, TSID times Mama, The Real Mama. Uh -huh. and, and she has over, Adele Barbaro has over 100,000 followers on her Instagram. So by her sharing um, her little like clothing edit, um, we were able to channel through all her followers and they came across and bought what she had to sell on our website. So oh. influence marketing is huge. So if you can tap in that, and it might only be sending a, um, a small product to a micro influencer, like a micro might have a thousand followers. But if people trust that influencer, like if their followers trust their influence, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. So if they have trusting followers, they'll be able to sell to their community with ease. So. Amazing. It's definitely like, yeah, it's definitely a way of marketing. Um, and I think it's it's the future for um, small biz as well. So great. Yeah. So coming to the end of this fantastic presentation, Sam, 
What pearls of wisdom can you give us before we head to our Q&A session? Um, so you've definitely got to be um, open to changes. Um, I think things are changing like really quickly. Like, I, I like just thinking back to my parents that have had a shop for 30 years. Um, they like they had no idea that um, the internet was going to be around. So I think it's definitely moving with the time. So following trends, um, yeah, definitely staying up with what's what's next out there. Um, and <laughs> you've got to have patience too. Like it's not going to happen overnight. It is a lot of hard work. Um, you've got to put in the hard yards to get where you want to be. Um, that's probably the biggest thing because I mm. first started the online store. It like horrified me that I had all this stock sitting um, in tubs in my lounge room where they could have been on the floor in the shop where people could view it. But if I didn't have stock in my warehouse on my online store, then it was never going to be like able like I was never going to grow because there wasn't anything there to buy. So right. I had to learn patience, just letting it sit there, right. like marketing it and um, hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> when we first opened, um, like we might do, we might have been doing two sales a day and those two sales a day were so exciting. <laughs> Where you'd hear this like um, notification on your phone and a sale would come through and we're all like high fiving each other going. <laughs> <laughs> so it's exciting and um, yeah, very. It's actually exciting to start something new. So if you're out there um, wanting to start something new, online is definitely the place to be. Mm. Yeah. So educating yourself as well. Um, so as I said before, um, I took the giant leap to go to San Diego and do a one week, um, it was like a four day conference and it was all about social media and different trends that were happening and um, learning about everything there is to offer in social media and learning from the best as well. Um, so definitely educate yourself, invest in yourself. Um, yeah, those are my three lessons. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Sam. Uh, sometimes change can be daunting, but you've made transitioning online sound really achievable and even fun. So thank you again. Um, my pleasure. <laughs> Now we'll move on to our Q&A uh, section. Uh, there are some questions that you, the attendees, have posted during the registration pro process. I'll post those very shortly uh, now for everyone to see. Um, and you'll notice Sam would have answered some of those already. But while we answer the other questions, please use this opportunity to post any other questions you have for Sam in the section to the right of the screen. You may need to open the menu to select it. Once you submit it, it will be assessed and posted live. And if we run out of time, your question will be addressed through another channel. So let's have a look at the questions. Let me just get my screen sorted. Okay. So let's have a look. So Sam, we'll just go through these together. So a question from one of our attendees is, I too have mainly women as clients. So I would love to know how you are able to get the not so tech savvy customers, generally speaking ladies over 60, to, to transition to online shopping. So it's actually been really interesting because over the last, um, Oh, three or four, 
three or four months, they've actually been forced to use online shopping. Like especially over the last six weeks, there's no walking into shops or anything like that. They're all been closed down. So people have been forced to actually learn, which is amazing as well. Um, we too have um, a, a like older um, like generation that shops with us as well, um, like senior, and um, they've been they've been doing it okay. Like if they need help with something, we're here to help. They'll just give us a call and we'll walk them through the process. So that's going back to having all your details there um, to be able to um, be contactable if they need help in anything. So customer service, you can definitely give um, customer service virtually as well as like personally. It doesn't have to always be face to face. So yeah, definitely mm. learning. My mum even did a purchase online the other day. She bought some <laughs> shoes. So <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> that um, the next so, question. So. Yeah, I just want to add to that too. It's um, really important to have an easy um, website to navigate, have clear, like, like almost like a step by step. So have it very clear, like in writing where to go, and like checkout points. Um, yeah, just make the website as easy as possible to follow. Mm, good advice. Um, so. Um, one attendee is trying to get some ideas about how to create um, her own website, um, but not limited to online ordering. She doesn't know where to start or they don't. So I'm not sure if it's a he or she. They don't know where to start. OK, so. Um, um, for um, like you don't have to sell something on a website because um, you might be a service based business so you might not have anything to sell so it doesn't have to be a product based business. I would probably start with um, telling your story, what you're about, what you do and um, having it very clear, um, having a landing page for people to go there, questions you might be answered like regularly, like questions that you might get regularly and maybe the answers for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'd probably suggest like yeah, summary about what you're what you're about, and um, and yeah, just being able to share that as well. And you can always add products later to your website. It doesn't have to be. Um, you can just have a landing page and then go on to add the products later if you want to sell something. A lot of people, are, yeah. So I would probably suggest that if you if you're a service based business. Um, yeah. <laughs> that it. Um, um, we've already answered the next question. So that question was, what steps can I take to set up e-commerce? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the next question was, uh, what was the biggest challenge when you first went online? Okay. Um, probably technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, navigating yourself around technology. I did a lot of. Um, research like um, watching YouTube channels um, and getting a lot of information that way had a um, I had time as well because I was up like feeding a um, newborn baby so <laughs> I was always like reading um, how do I do this um, and which is actually good at the moment with we don't often get given time and we've been given this time by staying home. So it's, if you use your time wisely um, by researching all this, um, yeah, it can definitely be beneficial. Um, I use um, Shopify and Shopify has um, a whole um, app where it's got, I'll just get what it's called actually. Um, it's got, everything you need to know. It's called Compass App. Uh huh. So, I don't know. hang on, it's coming up. So it's got, it's got everything on there that you'll need to know. So Compass Map, Compass. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's got, like it's even got start your own business. So you can watch that tutorial um, on how to put your business online very simply by using like the Shopify app. So right. Shopify has been amazing, especially yeah. for business. And it's an app as well, so it's on your phone. You don't mm. need to have it, like it's available on desktop too, but you can actually do everything through your phone. So it's so simple. Mm. You can take your photos, upload it straight away, and it's there for your customer to buy. Fantastic. <laughs> um, the next question, how can, I, how can I access free software if there is such a thing? Uh, so, I think you definitely get what you pay for. Um, Shopify has a like, I, I think it had a free trial like at the start. So you can try and if it doesn't work for you, you can always like unregister yourself. Um, but I don't know whether there's anything free out there. Um, there's definitely different plans. So there might be a lower plan Another idea, if you don't have a budget for a website at the moment, is actually create a Facebook group, invite people over to there, and you can actually sell from a Facebook group. So you might be a part of a buy, swap and sell community. You can do a very similar Facebook um, group for your store. So um, like it's um, you actually just pop it up, pop the picture up, put the price in there and people might purchase it like um, yeah they've just got a comment on it and then you can send them off a um, PayPal invoice um, it's probably if you don't have a budget for a website at this stage that's definitely a good sell good good um, starting point to sell yeah, perfect <laughs> amazing that's that's great because you've kind of gone into the details of you know, online e-commerce Shopify, um, and it sounds really ex exciting and new, but something that's just familiar, like a little bit of a stepping stone as far as um, that Facebook platform. I think that that would be a nice first stage. So thanks for that. I don't think um, people would have would have thought about that um, in this first yeah. instance. So yeah, so uh, definitely. Um, yeah, it can definitely create a little shop on a Facebook group. And um, if you actually um, go back right deep into our Facebook group, you that's exactly where I started all those years ago. So I would put up like we've got these jeans for sale and then you'll see like 10 or 12 comments down the track going, um, oh, sold size 12, sold size 10. So yeah. like, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, definitely a great place to start. Great. Um, next question. Uh, how long did it take for your online business to take off? Um, so, oh, I probably, it probably was a good year of like solid effort. Um, you do have to be very patient with an online business um, because there's so many elements to it as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely, it definitely took a long time to um, take off. <laughs> so patience is a virtue, so they say. <laughs> but you can definitely start like um, the old saying, you don't need to be great to start, but you need to start to be great. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so true, so true. A lot of us just have these dreams and we just stop ourselves from achieving them by, by just not even starting. Yeah. Um, so what is the most important element to starting your online business? Um, definitely start growing a audience um, with um, like on, um, on your socials because you need to have someone to sell to. Um, so yeah, I'd start with that. Even if you don't have anything to sell right now or you've got a website coming soon, you can pick a launch date and work on that. Um, launching 
anything is so exciting to people that are following you and they want to follow your journey. So if you're talking about um, like even when you're starting to build a website like all the way through, you could just be um, sharing your journey on social media about um, oh, today I'm talking to um, the website designer and just share a little bit of a story as you go and that's how you can build an audience but you definitely need an audience to launch a website. Fantastic. And our last question, a um, bit of a technical question. When you're taking photos of, uh, oh sorry, when, when you were taking your photos, do you use lighting rings? Do you always have a model on the clothes? Okay, so um, we'll, we do use a light ring and it's just a makeup light ring. Um, and it, we also use natural light as well. So we um, play with the two of it. I've, um, like I'm not a photographer by trade, but I'm doing all the photos myself and it's on, um, it's not on models, it's um, on the real, real women like we're all mums or students um we just grab anyone <laughs> anyone we can find that's willing to put their hand up to be a model um but then there's other ways that you can um photograph your product as well you can um do a flat lay and a flat lay is very eye-catching as well um that's just like laying your product down and maybe sort of creating a um a scene um, and yeah like that flat lays often work really well um, grabbing people's attention so there's lots of ways that you can photograph your product. Um, okay um, well everyone it's it's getting to it's it's past 11 o'clock so we'll have to wrap up. Um, so <laughs> it was Great pleasure to have you pre present for us and explain the journey of moving our businesses online. So thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. I've been, um, yeah, so excited to be here and um, I hope I, like, yeah, was value. <laughs> we, we loved it. And, and to the attendees, uh, thanks again for coming. It was great to have you here and I hope to see you at our future events. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you.